probably date back quite a long time versus just being diagnosed. You ever wonder why maybe you had so much chronic fatigue? Anybody have chronic fatigue? Yes. Energy problems, right? How about brain fog? Brain fog. Anybody has that? Okay. So brain fog is actually a worse condition than just low energy or fatigue. Because once we get into brain fog, we know that the communication, the brain isn't working properly. So guess what controls your thyroid gland? Your brain. Your brain, right. So the brain's not working. How is the thyroid gland going to work? Not too well. And that's a big issue. So what we look at today is this classic thing as far as TSH, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. But, you know, when you look at the parameters of this, what we're, what we're talking about is we're talking about maybe 0.5 to 4.5 is the reference range. Now, again, it's going to differ with different labs, but this is a huge gap. And so this is referred as to the reference range on the labs. But in reality, if we're getting down really low, we're getting into a condition where the thyroid is really in trouble, what's called hyperthyroidism or Graves. You heard of that? Mm -hmm. you, did you see the video? Did we show that one? Okay. So this is, this is a bad scenario because then that could be a really uh, bad thing as far as our heart, you know, and things of that nature just blowing out. So that's scary. Once we get up into the 4.5 range or above, now that's considered a hypothyroidism, okay, because the body's trying to crank out a lot of TSH. Well, the pituitary, uh, and we'll get into this, the pituitary crank and all this TSH, why isn't the body recognizing it? Why isn't the body utilizing it? Well, there's so much of this whole scenario. Constipation. Anybody have constipation? I mean, it might not be something you want to really admit, you know? But you might have bowel type of problems. You might have, you might go through bouts of constipation. You might go through bouts of diarrhea. You might, you know, patients have had problems where they, they thought something was really going wrong with them. There was a patient in this morning, and uh, she's been probably in her care for about six months now. And the thing that she noticed was is that her stools were like almost like rabbit pellets, you know? And she thought something was wrong. Well, they had already done a colonoscopy with her three years ago. There was no problem. So when she went back to her doctor again, was, guess what they wanted to do? Colonoscopy. colonoscopy again. She goes, no way. You know, I already had that done. What's going on? Of course, you know, they couldn't find out, you know? And they put her on the thyroid uh, replacement hormone, but she still had all these different problems. Now she's having good bowel movements, okay, normal bowel movements. And, you know, she's excited about that. You know, when, when you don't have this going on, you think, oh, my gosh, so I got cancer? This was going through her head. What's really going on in my body? So this is something that's confusing with so many people today. Now, you might think, how the heck does a chiropractor get involved with thyroid problems? Anybody wonder that? <laughs> Come on, raise your hand. Yeah. yeah. How the heck does it come? Well, you know, I've been practicing 29 years. Can you believe it? That's a long time. So I, I started practicing back in Hollywood. And I was actually working in a doctor's office that we, were, we weren't doing cancer treatment, but we were discovering cancer before, you know, people were diagnosed, doing all the specialized testing. And one of the, one of the doctors in there was a doctor privateer who was an MD and a DC. And he was doing major things. You might have heard of live cell analysis. Anyone ever heard, heard of that? Or take a drop of your blood, put it on a slide and scope, mm -hmm. you know, look at a scope and it's projected on the screen. And it gives you an idea of your blood cells, the conditions, you know, red blood cells and the health, the immune system. Is there some sensitivities going on? Well, I studied with this doctor and he was doing IV chelation. Anybody heard of that? Doing such things as uh, DMSO doing things high, IVs, uh, vitamin C. Well, he was thrown in jail for a period of time of practicing medicine because, let's face it, who controls the health care in this country? Yeah. Okay. Well, no, come on. Who controls the, who controls the health care of this country? Pharma pharmaceuticals companies. The pharmaceutical mm -hmm. companies. It's just like I sat down with an MD the other day, and... He says, yeah, I'm trying to go more into, you know, alternative type of health care, but the reality is I was taught everything. If you have this type of problem, you take this drug. If you have this problem, you take that drug. Why? Who's teaching them? Who's teaching them? Who's doing the research? 
pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical company. So that's all you're getting. You're not really getting true health care anymore. Nobody's getting true health care. That's gone. That's passe. So I felt, and studying with these type of doctors, doctor was thrown in jail, studying with Dr. Kelly back in, uh, in Texas that was doing major anti-cancer treatments at the time, and running these tests on myself, I knew there was always a better way, and doing major nutritional work back in you know, early 80s, seeing people you know, recover their health. But I'll tell you, I've never seen something so bad as today to what we're exposed and how it's really affecting the thyroid gland. It's huge. Now, what does your, your thyroid gland do? It's basically your engine, right? Anybody get cold hands or feet? Okay, cold hands or feet. Okay, that's a circulation problem, right? So what does that mean? That means the thyroid's not working well. Because if the thyroid was working well, we wouldn't have that because automatically the sensors in our body pick up, oh, it's cold outside, let's go ahead and speed up the thyroid, which is going to increase the metabolism, which is going to increase, of course, our temperature our body temperature, all right? So there's a lot of things that also happen with the thyroid besides just, you know, circulation. How about the heart? You know, the heart is under the direct influence of the, of the thyroid gland. How about as far as weight? We all know that, weight. Okay, so you get into metabolism problem. Now your body's not gonna be able to burn that fat. It's not gonna be able to burn it all, why? Because now these receptors on the cells have become resistant the thyroid hormones. What's going to cause that? Well, how about if you have problems like you have too much estrogen, you know, in your body? Anyone on estrogen replacement therapy at all? Taking estrogen, taking hormones, anybody that's taking birth control pills? Has anyone taken birth control pills? Yeah. You think that's a bad problem? Absolutely, because that's going to affect the thyroid gland. Always. How about blood sugar? Just your blood sugar alone is going to have an effect on this. And I'm not talking about high blood sugar. I'm talking about people that might be hypoglycemic. Anyone ever heard of that terminology? Mm -hmm. Now, what do we think? Do we think high blood sugar is bad, right? Mm -hmm. Do we think hypoglycemia, eh, it's not that bad. Anybody agree with that? Mm -hmm. No, it's bad because it is a precursor to diabetes. Things are getting worn out. So usually, if someone is hypoglycemic, their blood sugar is going to drop, they might get shaky, you know, they have to get something to eat right away. But the situation with that is that they don't just stay in that state, they go up and down, they go like on a roller coaster ride. And the same thing happens with individuals with a bit of a higher blood sugar. And so they become what we call insulin resistant. So no longer is insulin, which is going to carry the glucose, into the cells. It can't get in the cells anymore. It can't get in the cells. So that's insulin resistance. We talked about thyroid resistance. You got insulin resistance. You got the same thing. So look at that high, look at that huge spectrum as far as a reference range. Well, guess what? The Society of Endocrinologists determined that the optimum level for your TSH should be 1.8 to 3.0. That's what the optimal level should be 1.8 to 3.0. But it doesn't just end with TSH because there's so many different things going on besides it, just the TSH. Mm -hmm. How many people have had a full panel? Okay, that's what you think you've had a full panel. <laughs> you've been told you had a full panel. In reality, you haven't had a full panel mm -hmm. because there's so many different, um, you know, thyroid patterns that exist. And do you know that only one pattern actually requires thyroid replacement Hormones, which is what? It can be levoxyl, levothyroxine, it can be synthroid, it can be, le you know, it can, pardon me? Armor yeah, well, armor, which is a little bit more natural, or there could be nature throid, or, you know, things of that. Bioavailable. What's that? The bioavailable. The bioavailable, if you're getting something, you know, specially made to, you know, pharmaceutical great. But that doesn't matter, because again, all that that's trying to do is trying to deal with the thyroid stimulating hormone which necessarily isn't the problem it's not the problem you got to fix these other things going on so let's look at this okay here you got the hypothalamus sending messages down to the pituitary gland sending messages down to the thyroid gland pituitary uh, pituitary uh, 
Oh, excuse me, that was supposed to be hypothalamus. Okay. So, we've got the hypothalamus. Just do that. Pituitary. And then the thyroid. And then we have the liver. Okay, and then we have other tissues in the body. So the, the, th the, the hypothalamus has got to send a thyroid releasing hormone to the pituitary. The pituitary then stimulates a TSH, right? The thyroid then is going to produce T4 and T3. T4 and T3. So 97% of what the thyroid produces is T4. Oh, excuse me, 93%. 93%. And T3, 7% production. But your body only utilizes T3. That's all it uses. So what does that mean? Well, that means that the 93% uh, of the T4, 60% of that is going to be converted in the liver. Okay. So the liver has got to convert T4 to T3 in order for it to be activated. Because that's the only thing that is active is the T3. Now guess what? What happens if the liver is not functioning properly? What happens if you got a hormone imbalance? What happens if you had you know, situations going on with the thyroid so long that now the thyroid, again, it's a vicious cycle because now the liver is not able to do its job of conversion. Because what? because the thyroid hasn't been working for a period of time. So now we got the sluggish, you know, liver going on. And how many people have had gallstones? How many people have had gallbladder removals? Yeah. What does the thyroid do? Well, the thyroid stimulates the liver and the gallbladder to work properly. So if the, we talked about metabolism, right? Speeding up your metabolism or decreasing your metabolism. So if we're decreasing the metabolism in that liver, it's not working well. So it becomes sluggish, it starts to build up, you know, the bile in the gallbladder, you know? So what happens with that gallbladder? Develop stones. Next thing you know, you're having your gallbladder removed. Did that fix the original problem? Huh? No, it didn't. So see what's going on here. We gotta get to the root cause of these type of problems. So 20% of the T4 will then be transported, and it's all transferred by thyroid binding proteins thyroid binding proteins they kind of carry things to the to the destination okay it's like a railroad car you know you got to have something transporting and that's what the thyroid binding proteins are going to do is transport that but with this whole type of scenario we get a, a an imbalance going on because if the body's not working properly if the thyroid's not doing its job thyroid goes into a havoc state. Now, anybody, let's talk about some symptoms here. We talked about brain fog, dry, brittle hair. Yeah, how about falling out of your hair? Anybody have falling out, losing, losing clumps of your hair? Yeah. Okay, so there's a hormonal imbalance going on. It's becoming, there's too much testosterone happening. Anyone ever hear of PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome? You ever hear of that? Yeah. That's one of the major causes of infertility. We're seeing that in young girls, okay? because of the fact that they're put on the birth control pill because their menstrual cycles are heavy or they're painful. Has that been the case with you? Okay, and, the and then the birth control pill seems to calm things down. How do I know that? My wife went through the same darn thing. She had a thyroid problem. She had a thyroid problem for 20 some years. Nobody discovered it until I ran the appropriate test and discovered that she's got a thyroid problem. And then what I find out, she's got Hashimoto's. Anybody hear of Hashimoto's? Mm -hmm. So that's an autoimmune thyroid problem. So you got to take care of that because that takes the priority. You can never fix a thyroid problem and get the thyroid working properly unless you take care of the Hashimoto's, the autoimmune thyroid. Now guess what? If you have the Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune thyroid going on, your chances of having other autoimmune conditions are very high. Anybody here? Ah, oh, of lupus, God forbid. You ever hear of that? Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's a major autoimmune disease going on. But that's part of it. How about rheumatoid arthritis? Yeah, yeah that's another uh, autoimmune problem going on. 
Think of another one. Think of another one. Another autoimmune. How about gout? Gout is an autoimmune type of problem going on. You got shingles? Well, shingles is, you know, that's a suppressed immune system going on. Fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia. You, we wouldn't really classify it, but you're right because it does have the autoimmune component in there. What is it definitely poly, does. Poly, uh, Peripheral neuropathy. I don't know if that's what you're thinking. There's no, just it's, it's called poly, it's like uh, polycystic fibrosis. Polymyalgia. Yeah, polymyalgia. Yeah. That's just, you know, many Some new thing. muscle. Yeah. We'll forget about that because that's. Well, no, we were just with some older woman that just uh, said her doctor told her she had that. She had the numbness in the hands and arms and pain all over the body and yeah. tired and whatever like that. But she's like, yeah, they'll, they'll, you know, you'll find new diagnoses it's given out every day because what they It sounds more like neuropathy to me. It is more like a neuropathy. When you get the numbness, yeah, when you get the tingling, when you job. get the burning, you start to get the neuropathy. Right. And many of those individuals have the autoimmune component going on with peripheral neuropathy. So it's very rare that someone's going to have these more extensive type of symptoms and not have an autoimmune component going on. That's the big thing. Now. Unfortunately, most people, have you ever been tested for Hashimoto's? Anyone? No, you haven't, and that's what we see. So we discover, because we're running what we call the thyroid antibodies, it's very rare that your MD is running that test. So think about it this, like this. Here's the different things that need to be run, okay? TSH needs to be run. Total T4 needs to be run. Total T3 needs to be run. Uh, T4, free T4, free T3, um, reverse T3, T3 uptake. And then you can talk about TPO and TG, is it TDG? Yeah. And those are thyroid antibodies. So all these are the different tests that really need to be run, but it's different for everyone. There's no such thing is saying, okay, you have you know, a hypothyroid problem going on, you have the same thing as you do. You understand? Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as that. You can't put this in a can and say, okay, you all have the same problem. No, it's different. Because remember, there was these tissues, we're talking about the gut here, okay? A lot of that's in the gut, 20% the gut. So if you have a parasite, if you have a bacterial infection, if you have a chronic yeast infection, then, of course, all this is interfering with the conversion of that T4 to T3. <coughs> How can it convert? It can't convert. Okay, so you're not getting enough of the T3 necessarily. So when we look at things, we have to look at, okay, how's all the participants? How about chronic stress? How does that affect? Anybody have stress in their life? <laughs> Absolutely, everybody has stress in their life. So stress is going to come into play. How about cortisol? You ever hear of cortisol? Okay, cortisol is one of the things that, of course, the adrenals produces. Cortisol will affect that conversion process of the T4 to T3. Okay, so we have all this related in what's happening with the thyroid. I'll just read you an interesting testimony on this one patient. She was, I was diagnosed some time ago as having hypothyroidism. She, I think she's like 20, probably 25. Uh, which I am taking medication for at this time. I started noticing about a year ago from this date that my hair was dry, brittle, and falling out. Then I started having night sweats, leg cramps during the night, which affected my sleep. I, I also noticed gas and bloating. I would often wake up in the morning with a headache. There were times that I almost blacked out. I, don't, I didn't think that I may not be handling my blood sugars in the correct manner. So she didn't even think that she might have had something going on with her blood sugar handling. Okay. So when we talk about hypoglycemia, hypoglycemia, when we talk about insulin resistance, we're talking about blood sugar handling problems. That's what we're referring to. So I went back to my family doctor and told her my symptoms. She at the time suggested some blood tests. The results came back that I have a condition called PCOS and then I needed to take the birth control pills to regulate my cycles and to control pains that I was having in my back and in my left and right side of my ab abdomen. In my discussion with my MD, I asked her if there was any alternative way to manage this as, that I, as I did not want to take birth control for this condition as I felt that it was only just covering up the problem. Her response was I could either take the birth control pill or continue feeling that way for the rest of my life. 
I was finally introduced to Dr. Michael Valentine, and then and only then did the ball start rolling. The first thing Dr. Michael suggested, watching his uh, DVD, Mastering the Thyroid, and read the book, Why Do I Still Have Thyroid Symptoms When My Lab Tests Are Normal. Next came the blood tests, the stool, urine, and saliva samples. After all my tests came back with various labs, it was time for consultation. That in itself was very interesting and educational. I found out, for one thing, that my hormones were not right. So her hormones are 25 years of age. Now, if she stayed on the birth control pill, guess what her hormones would have been like? If she stayed on the birth control pill? No, it would have been worse, yeah. So the thing was, is that, you know, when you get into the symptoms that she's having, like pain and discomfort, and you don't know where to turn, what are you going to do? You're going to start looking for a drug, right, is the answer. And unfortunately, you know, that happens every day. But, you know, if you're going to look for that type of thing, it should only be temporary. But let's find out what's really causing the problem so we can get to the cause and fix it. Fix it. Uh, I started me on, uh, some spe on some hormone uh, hormone replacements. I started on some subligual hormone replacements just to balance things out to get her over this uh, critical stage and definite changes in my diet were made. And now after a few months I'm already starting to sleep better and ready to wake up in the morning. I no longer have night sweats and I don't feel tired all the time. I don't feel bloated and I'm now seeing new growth of my hair. I seem to stay focused on things better without losing my thoughts. I still have a ways to go and I'm looking forward to feeling even better. That's cool, isn't that neat? Mm -hmm. Okay, that was, that was because what we're trying to do is think outside the box. Thinking outside the box is what it takes in this whole process. You can't be in this situation. Just like you saw in that video, that patient, she was under the care of a GP, she was under the care of a gastroenterologist and another and an endocrinologist. And none of them knew you know, what, what to do really except kill off her thyroid. And she did not want that. So these are the things that are taking place, you know, and, you know, you either go into the system the way it is, and unfortunately, guess what the thyroid problem is? You think it's a problem that gets better, gets worse. What do you think? It gets worse. It gets, gets worse. worse. Yeah. It gets worse over time. So some people say, well, it's going to stay the same. No, it gets worse. So let's talk about genetics, because <laughs> genetics play a role in this. There is a genetic predisposition. Okay, genetic predisposition. That means if your mother, father had the thyroid type of problem, you're likely to have a thyroid problem. Depending on when their thyroid problem happened or was discovered, let's say it was discovered in their 70s, then the likelihood of their offspring having that problem, the thyroid problem, is probably going to be about 40s or 50s. That's where it's going to be. But then they have kids kids of the, you know, pay original parents, they have kids. Now guess when their kids are going to develop the thyroid problems? 20s, 20s or 30s or even younger than that. I mean, I'm seeing some 15-year-olds, yeah, with thyroid problems. And they're going through hell, you know, trying to go through school, trying to have concentration, and they're being, being misdiagnosed with ADHD. You ever hear of that? Attention deficit, you know, hyperactivity disorder? ADD, attention deficit disorder. Why? Because, you know, the th they don't think about the thyroid at that young of an age. They don't think that that's a possibility. And because what are they looking at? Just the TSH again. But remember all the different, you know, the different uh, tests that you have to really run. So, think of it this way. When we have the genetics, we have to suppress that. It's called epigenetics. It can be suppressed, meaning you can break that cycle. You could suppress it so it's not showing, you know? It's kind of, we're keeping it squashed down. Now, once someone does have Hashimoto's, they have Hashimoto's. There's no way of taking an autoimmune situation and not making it exist. Does that make sense? But at the same time, that doesn't mean that they cannot feel great. They can, you know, they can still function and feel great, even if they have Hashimoto's. Because what can we do? Suppress it, okay? Can suppress it. it. Not, you can't really say that because an autoimmune has already been triggered, that okay. response. So they have it. But can it be suppressed so it's non-existent? Yes. So that's what you're looking to do 
with those situations. You don't want anybody to go into the Hashimoto state because that's what, that's what occurs. For, there's about 70 to 80 percent, and they, even some figures are higher, those that have hypothyroidism have Hashimoto's. 70 to 80 percent. That's a lot, isn't it? That's a big time number. So we're not just talking about, you know, a, a scenario where someone has hypothyroidism, but we're talking about now that they have an autoimmune disorder going on on top of the hypothyroidism. So when that's taken place, medically there's nothing that can be done for the patient with autoimmune, any autoimmune except be given drugs. Now think about that. So what are the drugs? Think about the side effects. Do you ever listen? You know, you see these TV commercials? Oh my gosh, you know, it drives you nuts. It's amazing that people would really want to take these drugs after they after they listen to all the side effects of these drugs. I mean, it blows me away. Oh, you can have heart failure, you can have high blood pressure, and then you can have, you know, you <laughs> you suicidal all your bowels. Yes, <laughs> there you go. Depression, anxiety, everything that's supposed to help you with, you end up with, you know, and more. Because there's always the blood pressure problems, there's the blood sugar problems, you know, there's definitely anxiety and gut issues with that. So, medically, nothing is done for the autoimmune situation except for the drugs. Now, if we give someone something, medically speaking, they give someone for autoimmune disease, a lot of times it's prednisone. Anyone, anyone ever hear of prednisone? Oh, yeah. That's, that's nasty, nasty stuff. Yeah. That's yeah. nasty stuff. <laughs> no, so, I give it to my mom. She literally was put in the, in the nut ward yeah. twice. Oh, it really messes you up yeah. because, of the course, jacket. Oh, <laughs> it just blows you away because it's affecting those, you know, those glands and organs in our body, and it kind of does a meltdown internally. That's what it does. So, unfortunately, it's used quite often. But there's other drugs for different, uh, for uh, uh, other different autoimmune conditions that are just as bad, besides a prednisone. So we have to identify, is this going on? Because if it is going on, we've got to address that. That takes a priority of any thyroid, any thyroid issue, because you can't really get the thyroid balanced until you take care of that autoimmune scenario, okay? So, when we look at things from other aspects, there's only one scenario where the thyroid replacement hormones is necessary. So you got six of these. You got six patterns. And only one requires the uh, thyroid replacement. And that's called primary hypothyroidism. Okay? And that requires. And even that maybe can be turned around. Thyroid replacement therapy, we'll call it TRT. Okay, that replacement therapy. So that's the only one that really requires that. So it means the thyroid is not functioning properly, and the pituitary is releasing maybe too much TSH. Okay, so now, because the thyroid's not reacting properly, what does the pituitary want to do? Keeps on want to stimulating the thyroid hormone, but the thyroid's not responding to it. So what does that mean? That means that the TSH is high. So what is hypothyroidism? ITSH, right? Okay, that's what you have. So the second one is what we call hypothyroidism. Secondary to pituitary hypofunction. So what does that mean? Well, that means that the pituitary isn't doing the job that it should be doing. Now what could do that? What could cause that? Well, chronic stress, cortisol levels, maybe inflammation, infections going on in the body. Remember the gut issue, right? So if there's someone's got a parasite, it's unbelievable because we test the guts. You know, a lot of patients are tested by the medical doctor for their gut. Do you have a parasite? Do you have an infection? But guess what they don't test? They don't test the health of your gut. Mm -hmm. So you don't know how healthy your gut is. You might know you got a parasite, or you might know you got a yeast infection going on, but the thing about that is, if you don't know the health of the gut, then that's your immune system. 70% of your immune system is in your gut. So guess what? We, done this er we did this earlier on when we practiced, where we saw patients you know, that had parasites, 
And we were told, well, you want to make sure they go on an anti-parasitic drug. But all the anti-parasitic drug was, was doing was compromising their gut, causing a leaky gut. Well, guess what most thyroid patients already have? A leaky gut. So what does that mean? That means that instead of the food coming in into your small intestine and only, and only the food going on, the food is actually getting into your bloodstream and everything else is getting into your bloodstream. So now what happens to your immune system? It fires up. It goes into an overreaction. What do you get now? You got inflammation happening. You got big time inflammation going on. Think about things. What, what is inflammation? Well, it's going to, of course, trigger on that autoimmune type of scenario. So if you don't have Hashimoto's, but you have a leaky gut, what can you be guaranteed in a short period of time? There you go. Good. You're a good listener. <laughs> You're a good listener. Because it's going to trigger the autoimmune component. Got it? This is a lot. I'm, I apologize for giving you a lot of information, but this is a lot. I don't expect you to reiterate this to anyone. Does this kind of come under the, the preventative medicine? What we do or what? Yeah, what? like just this whole treatment, this philosophy of treatment. It's a, it's a, what we call it's functional medicine. Functional means this, okay, because what you have is alternative medicine, right? You got alternative medicine. Alternative medicine is turned into, you got this condition, you take this supplement or homeopathic thing, right? So. Um, you might have heard of vanadium. Anyone hear of vanadium or chromium for helping blood sugar regulation? Mm -hmm. All right, everybody's maybe heard of that. Well, that's, that's what alternative medicine has become. Functional medicine means, okay, what we're doing is we're analyzing things that are necessary to find out exactly what's causing your problem so that we can target nutraceuticals to help repair it. Because and you fix have it. The, the, the problems coming from the bottom, and this pharmaceutical people are just giving us something to just kind of hide the symptoms, right? That, yeah, that's a pharmaceutical component, but we were talking about even the alternative healthcare realm, okay? Which is where they're doing basically supplementation based on symptoms too. I call it the supplement, supplement of the month club. Yeah. You know, you, you, you ever get any of these magazines and there's 20, 30 pages, oh, this is guaranteed to lower blood pressure, this new supplement, right? Anybody get those magazines? Well, that's crazy, you know what I mean? That's not getting to the cause of the problem, that's dealing with symptoms again. So if you want to do that, just take a drug because, you know, well, it's a little bit better than a drug, but it's still not fixing anything. It's not getting to the root cause. So what we practice is what's called functional medicine, meaning we're targeting what's causing the problem and fixing that, getting everything to work better so you hopefully can be fixed. Because what did we say? We said there's six patterns. Only one pattern requires only one pattern requires the thyroid hormones. And are you all on thyroid hormones? Huh? Yeah, many of you are, okay? But many of you are. So the big thing is, is addressing that, fixing it, finding it, and fixing it. And that's where the difference is. So functional, you never might not have heard of that. Functional medicine, have you ever heard of that terminology? Well, I was thinking of like Dr. Mark Hyman. Mark Hyman, yeah, yes, I, yes, I, I, yes. Yeah. Uh-huh, and there's Dr. Amen. They're doing, they're doing similar stuff, but they're still yeah, they're getting more into this, more and more, okay. you know, more and more. Okay. So other things, and the, you know, there's other things that, that affect this besides, a, you know, it could be a high carbohydrate diet. It could be the um, uh, active stress response. I mean, postpartum depression comes into play here because a woman's, you know, body's under so much uh, stress during the pregnancy. This is when a lot of thyroid problems develop. Is during pregnancy. How many people have had their thyroid problem develop during pregnancy? Okay. I have hyper. Hyper. And yeah. did that develop in your uh, third trimester? Uh, thereabouts, yeah. Yeah, that's where it usually yeah. develops, okay? That's when it happens because the stress is the greatest. And there's already an underlying problem going on, of course, which now triggers it. What is it? It's the stress that's going on with your, you know, your hormones, of course, are totally, you know, out of whack at that time, too. So, then there's thyroid underconversion. Okay. So again, chronic adrenal stress is gonna cause an increased production of cortisol. Cortisol then, what you're not gonna get 
is you're not going to get the conversion of T4 to T3. This is not going to happen. Remember what? How much? <coughs> how much T, uh, T4 does the thyroid produce? What percentage? You remember that? Ninety-three percent. Ninety-three percent, right? So you only have seven percent of T3, which is the active form. So now 93 percent of that T4 is going to be converted to T3. But if if we have things out of balance as far as like the cortisol, and that's preventing that, or we have we get we get so much problem that we now have the body, the cells are no longer able to deal with this process of conversion as well. Because remember, 60% is going to be converted in the liver, 20% in the gut, and the remaining in the peripheral tissues. Okay? And every cell in your body has a thyroid receptor site. Every cell in your body. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Okay. So then we have thyroid overconversion. So that means what? We're getting too much of what? What are we getting too much of? Overconversion means we're getting too much T3. Exactly. Too much T3. We're getting way too much of that. So what's going to happen then? That's going to be because we have an increased testosterone. Okay? We got a scenario. What typically happens with women or young gals in a PCOS is they have an increase in testosterone. They have uh, insulin resistance. They already have blood sugar handling problems. So see when these blood sugar handling problems are developing at a pretty darn young age, at a really young age. Okay, you get too much of T4 and under under production of what we call TBG, thyroid binding globulin. Forget about that though. Okay, so then it can't get into the cells again because it's overwhelming the cells, right? Because now there's too much T3. So a lot of excess go floating around. And then five, we get thyroid binding globulin. Oh boy, my, as soon as I get lower, handwriting gets worse. Okay. Thyroid binding globulin. Oral contraceptives again, birth control pill. Estrogen replacement therapy. Increased thyroid, increase of this, a thyroid binding globulin. You get a decrease of free T3, and that's not going to enter into the cells because you don't have enough now. So see the fine balance that is, has to exist with the body? The body is so amazing. It's called a state of homeostasis. Things got to be perfect. This body was designed to run in perfect harmony. It's only now that we're screwing everything up. Now, you got other things that you, you know, people think about as well, how about your exposure, you know, to the water? Are you drinking water out of plastic bottles? Are you doing that? Yeah. That's bad news because you've heard of that, right? No, because it gets hot. Huh? Bisphenol. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't want to be doing that, you know, the plastic. Forget about getting hot because a lot of that plastic is really thin. So you get all kinds of chemicals. How about the chlorine in the water? How about the fluoride? How about the bromine in the water? Mm -hmm. You know? All this is to have an effect on the thyroid. And then some people think, well, what I need is I heard tyrosine is really good. You know, you ever hear that? Tyrosine. No, tyrosine is not really good because that's stimulating too much of production. That's throwing the thyroid out of balance. Or iodine because the iodine is real so much. No, the iodine can flare you up into the uh, Hashimoto state. Because what is T4? It's a, it's a four molecules of iodine. What's T3? Three molecules of iodine. You don't want to overwhelm. That's what they found. You know, people were saying, you know, with the scare that happened in uh, Japan, right? Mm -hmm. The nuclear reactor. Oh, let's just take some more iodine. Eh, no, that's throwing a lot of people into the Hashimoto state. That's not a good idea. I know there's been some proponents of that in the alternative healthcare mm -hmm. field. Say, oh yeah, all you need is more iodine. No, you're just jacking up your system and making it worse. You don't want to be doing that. Well, we did that 20 yeah. years ago. Why would that be? Because if you're if you are iodine deficient, like they say that we are, because it increases the thyroid peroxidase uh, uh, enzyme. And the TPO, remember the antibodies? You got the TPO th th uh, thyroid peroxidase uh, antibodies. Okay, th th uh, what is it? Thyroid peroxidase oxidase. Okay, 
you're increasing that by taking the iodine, which is in stimulating, overwhelming that, which is creating more of the antibodies, the attack on your thyroid. So it's not an iodine deficiency. It's not an iodine deficiency. No yeah. way. Yeah. No way. Because you only need a pinhead. It's like a super pinhead of iodine. That's all you need, and you're getting it, you know? And they say, what is it, like a little thin bowl of iodine a year? So you don't need that much iodine. It was like, you remember in the old days they started putting iodine, you know, the salt and all that because of the goiters yeah. and all that? They don't do that anymore. Have you noticed? Yeah. They don't do that anymore. The That's reason why, right. because it was creating all kinds of problems. It wasn't necessary. They were finding out that was making problems worse, not, not helping people. So it is not the thing to do. And then, of course, you know, goiters, when you start to get anybody develop these little nodules, you know, and you get these type of things going on, and they start developing, of course, that is because of the activity of the thyroid is just going haywire. That's what it's doing. It's trying to produce. It's trying to produce, produce, produce. You can't. You can't stress out these glands and organs. And then the sixth one is just thyroid resistance, where the thyroid is no longer doing the job that it should do. Why? Because of, again, an inflammatory process going on, infections, chronic stress, adrenal fatigue, all that. There's so many different things. But what's causing that is cortisol. Eh? You've heard of cortisol already. Homocysteine. Have you heard of that before? Homocysteine. Okay, that's CRP, C-reactive protein. All these, ESR, erythrocyte sedimentation rate. These are inflammatory markers that we do. And I guarantee if you have the comprehensive test, it's still not been done. Still have not been done. So you have not had the necessary tests to really find out where the pattern is, what exists, and then can you be fixed. So the longer someone's been on a thyroid hormone, is that good or bad? Why? Because it's suppressing the gland and organ, right? So that's why you really want to find out if you've had this problem, you want to get it fixed as soon as possible. Because there's a greater chance you're getting off it. If someone's been on the thyroid hormone for 20 years, is it likely they're going to get off of it? No. But what's the likelihood of them having Hashimoto's or some other complications going on? Pretty darn high. Pretty darn high. So you've got to look at that. How about slow wound healing? How about chronic infections? Things of that nature. We talked about uh, falling asleep or staying asleep. Anyone have a problem with that? Falling asleep or staying asleep? Staying asleep. There you go. There's a cortisol issue because cortisol, that's a rhythm that has to take place. So your cortisol, even falling asleep, if you can't fall asleep, that's because your cortisol is in balance. Okay, there's a rhythm that has to take place from the evening to the morning that we test the cortisol level four different times. Medically, when they test it, they only test it one time. Well, you don't know the rhythm going on. You don't know what's really happening with the cortisol level because it can vary that much. So, how are we 43. doing? 43. Huh? 43 minutes. Okay. <clears throat> so, there's a lot happening. Of course, I got a DVD, you know, that we made in regards to this, you know, to try to keep you forever. Everybody's got questions, you know, and I know you have a lot of questions. The thing is, is that doing these seminars, you know, it takes up a lot of time doing the questions. So, I don't really take your questions at this point in time. Here's what we do. We recommend that, you know, you write down the questions that you might have. Because what we're going to do is we're going to, you know, make you an offer to come in and get checked. You know, if you want to get your thyroid, you know, taken care of, then we'll give you the opportunity to get it taken care of. But there is paperwork to fill out because we want to know what's going on with your body. We want to know, okay, what has your blood work been like? Because sometimes we can go ahead and just fill in the blanks of the blood work that you've already had. You know? And if there's certain things missing, then we're going to need to go ahead and run those specific tests to find out where you lie in the spectrum of the thyroid problem. When we talk about doing tests, there is, a, there is a, a multitude of tests that can take place because it is a complicated problem if you saw what we're talking about here. So it is a matter of where is the, pri where is the priority, priority as far as what do you want to see happen? What changes do you want to make? You know, what are you most concerned about at this point in time from the standpoint of your health? Is it not being able to sleep? Is it not being able to handle stress? Is it heart palpitations? Is it falling out of hair? You know, is it the 
uh, the loss of brain function because that is a big thing with a lot of people because they can't work, they can't think. Oh, there's so many people that unfortunately have lost their jobs because now what used to take them two minutes has taken them 10 minutes or 15 minutes to accomplish that because their the mental processes aren't working properly. So when we look at you as an individual, we're of course looking at those different aspects, but we're also looking at what's called your autonomics because that has to be checked out. What the autonomics mean is we have the parasympathetic and then we have the sympathetic. Anybody heard of these? Mm -hmm. Okay, sympathetic. So the parasympathetic is what your body normally runs on, meaning it's going to cause a normal digestion, normal, you know, help with, the, with uh, the balancing of the body. But then we get into the sympathetic, and the sympathetic, of course, is what we call the fight or flight. Have you heard of that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fight or flight. And unfortunately, so many people are functioning here in the sympathetic state. So that's where it becomes an idea of checking your autonomics. How do we do that? We do special tests on the brain, see where the brain is. What controls the thyroid? The brain. So if you don't activate the brain, how can the glands, the organs, all work and function properly? They can't really, can they? Hmm? You agree? Okay. So that's why it's a matter of testing that. That's what no other doctors are doing. They're not checking your autonomics. And if they did, they wouldn't know how to fix it. So what things come into play as far as fixing your autonomics and balancing your autonomics is doing things like exercising with oxygen therapy doing things like stimula visual stimulation, doing things like uh, slow stretch to the cervical spine, doing things like calorics, high calorics, which is uh, uh, 105 degree injections into the ear, which uh, stimulates the endolymph within our uh, brain, our uh, vestibular apparatus. What that does, it go ahead, it's like rebooting a computer. If you had a problem with your computer, what would you do? You reboot it. It's the same type of thing, the caloric. It it's called a caloric. Caloric? Calorics, yeah. This used to be done back in the 60s. We have patients that are nurses and they remember this being back, uh, being this being used back in the 60s. But they don't do this anymore. Why? Because it's easier to push a pill. Easier to push a pill. But that's only one piece of the puzzle. There's so many different things being utilized to balance out that brain, get that brain working properly. So we get the communication happening from where does it originally start? Do you remember what part of the brain? The hypothalamus. Okay, the <coughs> hypothalamus. Which then sends the messages to what? Pituitary. Pituitary, which then sends the messages to? The thyroid. The thyroid. There you go. You know more than most four-year medical students. You <laughs> do, <laughs> really. It's unbelievable. They are not taught these things. So. That's that's part of the process. So anything that I miss there, Dr. Leonard, calorics, uh, visual stimulation, visual so. stimulation, yeah, exercise with oxygen therapy, pretty. <coughs> now, are you just saying for oxygen therapy? Mm -hmm. Is that just like one, one of those little home? Um, no, bottles. No, it's um, concentrators. Hyperbaric? Because what you're hy hyperbaric is where they're trying to force oxygen into the body, into the tissues. That'd be good for someone that like had a stroke, you know, that needs an emergency situation. But exercise, uh, exercise with oxygen therapy is so much better because you're exercising, which means you're increasing the circulation, which means that you're getting the oxygen into all the tissues rather than trying to force it into your body. So your body is utilizing it much more efficiently than have it being forced into it. Okay, that's the difference between hyperbaric. So exer exercise with oxygen therapy starts to bring about the energy start to get the cells to work better because what remember what's happening with the cells? What was a big issue with the cells? They're getting overloaded. They're getting overloaded. They go into a thyroid resistance, right? Thyroid hormone resistance where they're not able to take, you know, the T3, uptake that. So that's what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the detoxification process going on. That's what the exercise with oxygen exercise with oxygen therapy does. So it's getting the whole waste removal happening so your body works much more efficiently. And it's, it's utilized with con oxygen concentrators. What that means is, is that it takes oxygen out of the air, 
and it concentrates it, and then of course we have you wear a cannula. You ever seen those things? You've probably seen in the hospital. And you exercise with that while you're doing some other type of thing. Okay? So that's part of the process, the whole process of re-energizing. Things like whole body vibration. Whole body vibration is a wonderful stimulate. Because even people with even people with thyroid problems, they got bone metabolism problems, okay? Usually ending up with osteopenia, osteoporosis. You familiar with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. On top of everything else that's taken place that we already talked about, gut, you know, and energy and brain uh, misfiring. So uh, whole body <coughs> vibration therapy was developed in East Germany originally. And East Germany and Russia used it because what they were able to do is they were able to stimulate the uh, exercise and the benefits of the exercise with the athletes. Remember how big the Olympics were, mm -hmm. man? They were doing all these, you know, they did whatever it took. Those people were on steroids. <laughs> they were crazy. So they did whatever it took. Okay. So tonight, and tonight only, here's what we're doing. We're offering you the opportunity to come in and get the evaluation. But you have to be committed to really wanting to get well because it's not an easy program. What type of changes would you have to make you think? What, what type of changes? And we're talking, this is lifestyle changes, right? Diet. Diet. Diet's huge. Yeah, diet's a huge thing. So if you're not, if you're not committed, it was like one of the patients, you know, her blood sugar has been so high. She's like 49 or 50 years of age. She's got peripheral neuropathy. She's got thyroid issues. She's got diabetes, you know, she's only 49 years of age. You see how the, thing, the system is breaking down there? You got multiple things going on? That's sad. But her blood sugar was always 170. 170, which is terrible because blood sugar should be about 85 to 100. That's and that's two fasting. medications too. And that's with two medications, right. So her blood sugar's been out of control. What does she have? Definitely diabetes, insulin mm -hmm. resistance, all the stuff going on. She's was in the 170s, now she's down in the 140s, okay, over about four to six weeks. She's down. We've had to change her diet, had to put her on certain nutraceuticals to get her blood sugar handling problem taken care of. Because what she's doing is, is that she's destroying that pancreas. So the pancreas has been under attack and then she would end, end up being an insulin dependent diabetic. That's scary. You know what the ramifications of taking insulin every day are? Inflammation. Inflammation. More inflammation. And your body, their body's already under an inflammatory state. Now you're putting insulin into it, which is creating even greater inflammation, which then leads to poor circulation. You ever hear these people that end up with gangrene and then they have to have their, oh, God forbid, terrible. Okay, so diet is one thing. What else, what else would have to be uh, changed? Of course, exercise. Exercise, exercise. exercise absolutely. Exercise is going to be a key thing. What else might you think might have to be uh, changed with the individual, commitment-wise? Habits. Habits, yeah, general habits. Habits, yeah. Habits, as far as not even just diet, what they're eating, because a lot of the times individuals that have the thyroid problems have food sensitivities going on. Because your gut, remember the leaky gut, so what does it mean? Now you've got sensitivities to all kinds of things. And one of the main things is gluten, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's gluten and the thyroid tissue are similar. So your body's attacking the gluten, it's also attacking the thyroid tissue. Could be soy, eggs, even dietary yeast, dairy, the casein and dairy, all these different sensitivities. And if the individual's worse, now they start to develop sensitivities to other grains that are even non-gluten grains, maybe rice, maybe potatoes, maybe um, or Corn. Corn is huge, yeah. There you go. Thank Corn you. What's that? Corn is a grain. Yeah, it's horrible. Yeah. Moldy mostly. Yeah. And then beans, you know, like the lectins and beans. So there's things that have to be changed with the individual that want, you know, that wants to be healthy because it is a huge commitment as far as making changes. Taking your blood sugar. You know, we ask you to do that because mo monitoring your blood sugar is a huge issue. If we don't, correct an underlying blood sugar handling problem, you will not get well. You will not get well because the blood sugar handling problem is even more of a priority than your hormones. Even more of a priority because everything is based on that. The hormones are based on the blood sugar handling, which you know, you're familiar with cholesterol and all that. 
And so that's a big issue because what do they try to do now? Your cholesterol is high, they try to drive it low. Well, what happens with a lot of thyroid patients? Your cholesterol, your HDL, your LDL, your triglycerides are totally out of whack. Totally out of whack. Because that whole, pan, that whole uh, panel is just can't, can't do well because of the blood sugar handling issues going on. Mm -hmm. So normally, this is we're talking about two visits. And the evaluation is two visits. The first visit, of course, is to evaluate you. The second visit, of course, is to go over what we're doing with you and find out what tests we've done and uh, necessarily and do some special uh, treatments to show the changes that can be done with you as an individual, especially if we're finding this autonomic imbalance. Remember the autonomic, parasympathetic and sympathetic. Tonight, it's $75, $75 for that, two, visit, two visits. Again, we'll give you the paperwork. We ask that you get the paperwork in here because we're going to have to review everything. Normally, that visit for the two visits would be uh, $275. That's a normal fee for that. And tonight and tonight only, it's 75 What you would have to do is you'd make a $25 non-refundable deposit because we are scheduling the appointment here. And then the $50 remaining is brought at that first visit, your appointment date. Is the paperwork due before the first visit? Yes, it is. Okay. And it's got to be here 48 hours before your first visit. Okay. We have to look at all this. You know, we look at these things. Patients say, you actually read that? Heck yeah. How the heck are we going to know what's going on with your body? Mm -hmm. So we're looking at all the different things going on with you to find out what's happening, what tests, you know, that were missed, what might be going on with you as far as, you know, these different patterns. Are you falling asleep after eating? Anybody have that problem? Where they get tired after they eat? Yeah, Here, there's a problem, blood sugar handling problem, big time. So these different type of problems you gotta, you gotta be looking at. So there's questionnaires, there is, is there anything I miss? I don't think I miss anything. DVD. DVD, so we ask that you do, you know, watch a DVD, because there is a DVD that goes a little bit more into the technical aspect. We want you to become great at being able to take care of your own body. It's really about empowering you so you are sharp as to know what's going on, right? Because what are we supposed to be? We are all supposed to be doctors of our own bodies, really. And you are the best doctor of your own body in understanding what's going on. But our job is to act as a middleman because we, of course, got the ability to help cool. you, you know, get through this whole process of understanding and get you, you know, uh, so that you're going to be better equipped to handle these, you know, situations that might come up, you know, the different things that, you know, we find on testing. It's like another patient. It's so sad because the gut's been so compromised, their immune system is so low. Now, when, you th when I say that the immune system is low as far as, the, you know, the healthy bacteria, because the healthy bacteria in our gut, there is good bacteria and there's bad bacteria. The good bacteria, of course, determines our immune system function. So a lot of times people think, well, I never get sick. That doesn't have necessarily anything to do with your immune system function. It really doesn't. Because sometimes you need to get sick in order for your body's immune system to be stimulated to work in order to fight things off. Okay? So it doesn't have anything to do with that. But those people that are chronically, you know, catching three, four colds a year, well, that's definitely an immune system that's not working well, that's more suppressed. So there is that. So yeast infections and you know, the, the, the type of testing we do to find this out, it's amazing how many people have yeast and chronic yeast infections going on in their gut. And now when, we, when they do the genetic testing and they test with antibiotics or they test with other uh, drugs as well as botanicals, which are more natural sources, they can't even grow this in a Petri dish. You know what a Petri dish is? Mm -hmm. Okay, to determine <coughs> what it is and what's going to kill it. That's how genetically modified things are becoming today. It's scary. It's really scary. I can't believe it. So I'm all of a sudden seeing these tests where they cannot do the genetic testing with it. So hmm. somebody who, say, for example, in their teens took tetracycline for acne and yeah. now it's yeah. just riddled with big time. And yeah, big time. Yeah, that's what we're looking at. Okay. That's what we're looking at. That's what we're going to find out from the gut. I mean, we even had a patient, uh, vertigo type of problems, and. You know, we look at the blood sugar, we did this gut test, and 
there's, there's, there's candida, there's yeast infection, there's a parasite going on, all suppressing his immune system. His bacterial flora is really low. So, and then the interesting thing about this, this guy has had concussions. Mm -hmm. So what, what's, been, what's been affected? His brain. The brain. So how has that affected the glands and organs? They're not working well anymore. They're not doing the job. So now, we've been doing our work with him. This is a guy that was having all kinds of problems. He's been, I don't know how many crashes because he races. So he is now, we asked him, well, what's your improvement? He's been there care, I don't know, six or eight weeks. 70, 80%. 70, 80%. That's impressive. I don't know if you read this with football players, the concussions wow. that are happening, and with hockey players, yeah. all Boxers. these different people. And yeah. this is devastating to our bodies. <laughs> So we can't go through things like this. Now you think, well, I never had any type of concussion or anything like that. Well, have you ever been involved in a car accident? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. There's <laughs> trauma to the brain right there. Did you ever have any fall? Did you ever get your bell rung? Did you ever fall off a tree? Did you ever fall off a swing? All these different things. They're all the cumulative as far as how it affects you know, our brain and then our bodies. There's a lot to this. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. Did you learn a lot? It's over an hour. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, Luce is going to be taking appointments, okay? All your questions, you know, be answered at the time of the appointment. We do have the DVD. So, uh, that's it. Okay? Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. so much. My Thank pleasure. You.